Because it's not really a, yeah, it's a separations template, not a registration template or a placement template. Call it whatever you want to call it. I don't give a shit. I call it whatever I'm going to call it because I have no respect for the nomenclature of any industry. What's going on, Print Fam? If you're new, I'm Cam. Welcome to the Print Life. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a reusable separations template in Adobe Illustrator. To create this template, you're gonna need a computer and Adobe Illustrator. And we're gonna start by creating an artboard. I'm gonna go create new, and I'm gonna make the artboard the same size as the palettes on my press. So we have aluminum palettes, they are 16 inches wide by 22 inches tall. We're gonna turn a few things on. We're gonna go to view, turn on rulers. Uh, we're also gonna go view show grid and view snap to grid. And now that we've set up our artboard, it's time to start placing our guides. And there's gonna be a lot of them, so follow along closely and do as I do. Or experiment and do as you do, but just do do. We're gonna click in the ruler up top and then just drag it on down. And we wanna snap it to essentially the one inch marker right here. This first guide is where we're gonna put our main registration mark. Next, we're gonna drag down to the two inch marker. Just like that. And you can see if you line it on over, two inches, one inch, zero. So we're zeroed out on the artboard here. Now we're gonna do the rest of the markers in half inch increments. So we got 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 5, 5.5, and 6 should be more than enough. I need to grab this one, and there we go. 1 inch, 2 inch, and then half inch increments all the way to 6. I almost messed that one up, didn't I? There we go. We're going to draw a center line by grabbing over here on the rulers, and we're going to take it to 8 inches. Pretty easy to find your center. You know uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8, so 8 is our center. Pretty straightforward. The way that we load at our shop is that we hang the edge of the collar over the edge of the pallet, just like this. So this is where the seam or the hem would be hanging off the edge. So imagine that. Registration marks go here, uh, two inches to the top of the art here, and then 2.5. This is kind of our standard lineup right here. But I also know with a hoodie that from the edge of the collar to the hooded pocket on a small is usually about 13 inches. So I'm also gonna grab and drag one marker down here to 13 inches. And this is just gonna keep me informed if I'm setting up art files and I know there's hoodies in it that we can't exceed this area for the printable area on the hoodie. Last thing we're gonna do is create a pocket guide. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna select a rounded rectangle our standard placement for a pocket is usually two inches over from center, four inches wide, five, six inches tall. This is kind of the standard. Uh, and then I'm gonna select the group selection tool or the direct selection tool. I'm gonna click on this element and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say make guide. I think that that's all the grid stuff we need. So I'm gonna go to view, uh, hide grid, and you can see what we're working with here. So this is our main guides. I'm gonna rename this layer a guides, obviously. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna lock this layer down. We're never gonna edit this again. This is kind of our baseline. This gives us the information we need to lay out graphics correctly. And it's easy to turn it off, to turn it on. Now that we have our guides, we need to tackle the registration marks. In a future video, I'm gonna show you a really cool pre-registration template and system that I've been developing for a little while. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it yourself. You, but. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with these reg marks. It's more about the board and the palette and all that stuff. I'll show you some other time, so stay tuned. And did you subscribe yet? Well, go ahead and subscribe. I'll wait, subscribe, it's cool. Back to the video. We're gonna create a new layer and we are going to call this layer registration. All right, you know what, let's just call it reg marks. Now reg marks are fairly straightforward to make. I'm gonna grab my line here and I'm just gonna sort of drag one out along this center line right here. I'm gonna zoom in on it. I'm gonna go to transform. A one inch line is absolutely more than enough. Actually, I'm probably gonna take it to a 0.75 inch line. And then I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hit control C, control F, and then I'm going to hold control, hover over it where it has to rotate and I'm gonna hold shift and then just rotate it 90 degrees. 
I'm going to make sure to go over here to my stroke and I'm going to make sure to hit X so that there we go. So that uh, the stroke is activated. I'm going to come over to swatches and I'm going to select right here. This is registration fill. Now what registration fill does is tells the printer or the rip that you are using that anything filled with registration should be included on every page or every film that you output. Now we are also going to grab the ellipse tool and just a side note, I want to be very clear about something. There are a thousand different types of registration marks that you can create and none of them are the right or the wrong way. You're going to build whatever works best for you. So don't let anybody tell you that one reg mark is better than another. It's all the same. It doesn't matter. So just build one that you like or that's aesthetically pleasing to you. It's all the same bullshit. So I'm just going to drag this out until it feels right to me. There doesn't have to be any specific settings with this. Now I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to a line and I'm just going to go center. And then I'm also going to do center here. Now when we zoom in real close, you can see that the center of the stroke is perfectly aligned with our guide here. I'm going to make sure it's all selected. I'm going to hit control G to group this. And then if we expand this, you can see there's our first grouped registration mark. Different strokes for different folks. We actually, this is surprising, but we have a, a two point stroke here in, in the shop. And this is for specific reasons. You don't need to go that thick. But I have set, set this at a two point stroke and we're gonna drag this up to the top guide right there. There you go, and if you zoom in, you can see the horizontal line is perfectly centered on the guide as is the vertical. So this is a good registration mark. Now I'm going to select it again. I'm going to hit control C and control F and you will notice over here in the layers, we have a secondary group. I'm going to name this first one top mark easy enough. And then the second one bottom mark. Oh my gosh, that was very difficult. Now I'm going to lock the top mark and I'm going to select the second mark that we did. I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to drag it down somewhere to the bottom of the artboard about like that. Now the idea here is that if we place a piece of art that's this big, I will grab the bottom mark and I will just kind of hold shift and drag it up about an inch away from the bottom of the art file. And let me think, what else do we need to in include here? Oh yeah, now we're gonna take a second to place some editable job information. We're gonna fill this thing with the registration fill so that it shows up on every film, just like our reg marks. We are gonna make one more layer. We're gonna call this layer info. We're gonna come over here, select the type tool, and I'm just gonna zoom in and kind of draw a rectangle, probably more or less the whole distance of our artboard here. First, I'm gonna make sure that the fill is in fact filled with the registration, just like our registration marks. I'm gonna delete all this text. I'm going to open uh, the, not the type tool, but the paragraph tool, and I'm gonna write justify this. And in this text box, it's filled with registration fills, so it's going to include this information on every film. So I'll just typically put something like, you, know, you can type invoice or just number and then just type your invoice number, 00001123, that works. Uh, then you can do a hyphen, uh, you could do front 2.5, however you wanna do that. You can put whatever information here that you want to. The more hands it's gonna to touch, the more information you should probably include. And now because we have it right justified, as we type, it's gonna expand this way. All right, so now we have our information there. I wanna go back to guides quickly, and I'm going to expand on this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, using the rounded rectangle tool, an element inside of this artboard. I'm just gonna click in the corner and drag it out because I know that this is the size of our palettes. Now I'm gonna use the arrow tools just to create a little bit bigger radius here and I'm going to convert this to outline. And that's the first step. So we've put just, all it looks like really is that we've kind of put a radius on the corners here. The next thing I'm gonna do is expand this artboard to a certain measurement. And I'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna come up here to my artboards panel. If I say that there's a panel and you don't have it on your dashboard, just go up to windows and open it from right here. So there's artboard. So I'm on my artboards panel. I'm gonna click the little paper icon here, double click it. And all I wanna do is adjust my width 
to match the media that I print from my printer. So our printer uses a 17 inch wide roll of film. So I'm gonna put 17 inches on my width. And then the height of our printer, you know, it depends. We adjust it according to how much height we need on our films. And I'm gonna show you how to handle that in a second. But first, we're gonna take this from 22 to 23 inches and I'm gonna hit enter. And now you can see that what we've done is this is our media. Inside of this is a guide that we're going to use just to make sure that we're always creating artwork that fits on our palette. But I'm going to click this guide or this element here. Just use the group select or the direct selection tool. And I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna right click it and I'm just going to go make guide. And the reason we make all of these into guides is so that when we go to print it, none of that information actually prints. Makes sense? Good. Now let's lock these guides back down. This is a really good template for you to use moving forward. We're gonna go back into guides. I'm gonna group all of this into its own. All right, so within that this guide, we have a group of them here. Now I'm gonna hit a new layer. I'm gonna drag that into guides as well. And what we're gonna put here is some text information. Now I'm gonna put the text information on the outside of our artboard. Reason being is I wanna keep it filled. I wanna be able to fill it. I want to be able to see it, but I don't want it to print on our film. So we're just going to do a quick little dandy here. We're going to start here. We're going to select on the guide and we're just going to draw out a box about that big. And then with inside that box, my first measurement is just going to say two inches. Simple, right? And I'm also just going to scale this up. We're going to go to window, type, character. Uh, I just want to scale this up to perhaps I think seven, yeah, let's go 17 points. Now, once I've put in my first measurement, I'm just gonna drag this off of the artboard a bit, just like that. Now I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift, and you can see the two arrows on top of each other, that means it's duplicating. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the, I'm gonna click Alt, end in the two, and I'm just gonna start dragging. I'm gonna skip this line, and I'm gonna take it to this next line. And once I've done that, if I hit Control D, it'll duplicate itself. All I'm gonna come do through, oh, dude, can't talk. Where'd I learn to talk? And I'm just gonna edit the inches here. So we know that's three inch, four inch, five inch, I guess, six inch. So that makes pretty good sense to me. It's over there, I can see what I'm dealing with. Now, last thing I'm gonna do is click here, click on the thing, click and drag. Now I'm gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna drag this down to here. And I'm just gonna write a little reminder hood pocket. This is just to remind me that if we're dealing with art that's going on a hoodie, this is my safe zone. You could even reduce it down to 12, but I think at 13, it gives me about an inch away from the pocket, if I remember correctly. I'm doing this from memory, and any of you that know me know my memory is eh, she's not to be trusted. I'm going to group all these elements. Object, group, there we go. This is a very nice refined artboard that you can use. You can easily come through and place art files at the location you want them to fall on your palette. And you can get back to worrying about what you're actually doing for a living, which is printing shirts, instead of always worrying about what the placement is going to be and all that kind of stuff. Now, I do want to show you one more little trick within the artboard when it comes to placing art. I'm not going to grab an art file. I'm trying to keep this simple and visual. We're going to create a new layer in here, and this is going to be called our art layer. And let's assume that our art file on this particular graphic is, well, let's just say it's that big. And I'm gonna place it, uh, not at two inches, but we're gonna, you know what, I'm gonna do one more thing here because this is actually driving me nuts as well. Hang on, I'm thinking back to this. I'm gonna object expand these measurements just so they're not showing that bull crap. There we go, now we're cooking. Because it was, it was showing the editable text line and it was making it sort of useless. Lock our guides back down. Say for the sake of argument that this is as big as our art. And if we go to transform, it's about 8.3. You know, I'm going to link these together and we're going to take this up to 8.5 inches wide. I know from experience that if I print this right now as it is through my RIP software, it's going to include all the entire artboard. So although we only need the information right here, the printer is going to feed this entire sheet. To prevent that, all you're going to do is first you're going to come into your registration mark and you're going to highlight the bottom registration mark you're going to hold shift and just drag it up to an inch away from the bottom of the art about like that 
Next thing you're going to do is we're going to edit the artboard itself. So we want to crop it so that our printer only feeds the necessary amount of media. To do that quickly, just hit, con I'm sorry, hit Shift O, and you'll see that brings up the edit artboard draggable thing. This is the easiest way as opposed to going into your artboard editor. I'm just going to click down here, click and drag it on up to about right there. So our guides are still intact. We know where we're going to land. Um, and that's that. So now we are ready to print this thing out. Okay, now you need to make sure to save this as a template. And there's a reason for doing that. I'll show you in a second. Come up file. And instead of going save as, you're just going to come here to save as template. Uh, and you're going to save this into a, a location that most of you, where you save most stuff. We have a screen print assets template. And we're just going to call this reg template 2.0. And what this does is makes it to where when you open the template, it opens as an untitled document. You're not editing the original. So normally, if I close the regist uh, registration template, right, 2.0, and I open it again, it opens the reg template. If I edited this and saved it, whatever I edited and saved it on would be saved on the original file, right? But if I go open, uh, and I go to wherever I saved that to, design tools, screen print assets, T, and I open the AIT file, you'll notice it's titled as untitled three, which means if it saves as, it's not gonna save the original template file, it's saving its own individual file in the default save location, and then you can go save it to your client's art folder or whatever it is you're gonna do. Once you've done this, you're ready to use this thing and uh, abuse this thing and start using it, and hopefully it helps you set up your art files. Hey, all, all right, print fam, that's it for today's tutorial. Tune in next time, I got a lot more coming. Gonna take you from the beginner, a 10 intermediate to an advanced separator in Adobe Illustrator. So stay tuned. In case you forgot, like, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and ding the goddamn bell. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, print fam. And peace out.